Hi, I'm Pat Clark with Lifting Gear Hire Corporation, and today we're discussing troubleshooting ideas surrounding our electric chain hoists. We'll start with the basics first. When we do receive a call from one of our customers in regard to our electric chain hoist, it's usually due to one culprit, and that is an inferior power source. We do everything we can to inform you of the proper voltage and amps required to power the hoist. In fact, when we receive deliver the hoist, you'll notice on the pennant and affixed are some reference materials. Specifically, this one points out the proper gauge and length extension cord that would be utilized to power our one and two ton electric chain hoist. In fact, at full load and running on 115 volts, this can see amps as high as 24. We also offer hoists ranging in capacity from two and a half all the way up to 10 ton and can be wired for either 220 or 440 volts. If it is wired for 220, it can see amps as high as 25. If it's wired for 440, it can see amps as high as 13. So in summary, you want to make sure you check all the power sources that lead up to the hoist itself. So you may have noticed when you take deliver the hoist, we ship the controls and the power source separately. On our one and two ton electric chain hoist, we'll supply you with the cord and the appropriate size 115 plug. On our large units, they're supplied with a 220 or 440 volt, we'll supply you with the whip that has the exposed wires. It's your responsibility to find the appropriate size OSHA plug and fit up accordingly. To connect them, you grab the plug, find a notch, match it up with its male female counterpart, screw in the power plug, grab the pendant cord, and repeat the same procedure. And now you're ready to try the hoist. So when you're checking the hoist, grab the control pendant, and if you're to press up on the hoist, and the hoist moves down, or if you're to press down on the hoist, and the hoist moves up, you may have your leads reversed. You want to recheck those connections and then retest again. You may also experience the hoist inability to lift at the rated capacity, or improper lifting or lowering speeds. First, you need to check to make sure that whatever you're lifting is appropriate to the capacity hoist that you're working with. Also, you may have experienced a loss or a drop in voltage. Either way, you're going to have to check and amend one or both. Also pertaining to power, if your hoist is making a loud buzzing or humming sound or is clicking, it may be trying to get more power to the hoist. Again, you're going to have to check your connections and your cords. Because these hoists are electric, they have a duty cycle, specifically 25% meaning that out of every hour, you can count on being able to use the hoist for about 15 minutes. The hoists are engineered and designed to stop working and allow themselves to cool down when they're overheating. To prevent this downtime, we ask you to follow a few steps. First and foremost, as mentioned earlier, make sure you have the appropriate size gauge, length, and power that's actually supplied to the hoist. Next, decrease the frequency of your lifts. And lastly, make sure that you decrease the weights of the loads that you're lifting or hoisting. These electric chain hoists have an electromagnetic brake on the inside. It's designed to stop all hoisting operations when you're not using the pendant or there's no power to the hoist at all. However, if when the power is off, the hoist continues to run, you must give us a call immediately. If your hoist has the ability to lift but not lower or vice versa, let's start with something rudimentary. We want to make sure that our limit switches are not engaged. Also, depending on the length of the rental, or if you're working in an area with high vibration, you may experience some of the wires on the interior or in the back of the pendant become loose. If that's the case, you want to ensure that the power is off, remove the housing, and inspect for any loose wires there or on the back of the pendant. Before we finish up, I'd like to remind you of a few safety guidelines. It's important to never use the hook and the chain as a sling itself. Doing so can cause deformation of the hook and damage to the chain. In addition, when loading the hook, it's important not to point load it. The hook is engineered and designed to deform to prevent overloading and catastrophic failure. As a good alternative, choose a piece of hardware that can safely rest at the bottom of the hook. In addition, on these multi-chain blocks, we want to make sure we don't capsize the hoist block itself. In doing so, can cause kinks in the chain. Thank you for watching this troubleshooting video. We hope that you found it helpful. For more questions regarding electric chain hoist and other products that we rent, give us a call. As a reminder, the contents of this video were for informational purposes only. Please consult the manufacturer's guidelines and use and care instructions before beginning.